Yes, we are live now on Facebook. Yes. A warm evening to all. It's pleasure to introduce myself. This is Azra Sultana here, Director, Principal, Senior Secondary School, Educationalist, Leadership, Parenting, Personality Development Coach, Mind Trainer, and Motivational Speaker as moderator for today's panel discussion. Before I go ahead with start of panel discussion here, I would like to go for my own prayer. Rabbi Rahli Sadri wa Yasr al Amri wa Hwala Khatni min Hassani Yafkahu Khor. Trying and doing are two different things. When you try, you hope. When you do, you succeed. To open up the panel discussion, I request Mrs. Shikha Sharmaji, a microbiologist, nation builder, entrepreneur, principal, to proceed with. Saraswati Mandana. Ma'am, it's for you. Greetings to everyone. Uh, this is our ritual to start any good work with some worship of God. So today we are going to worship our uh, goddess Saraswati, which is known to be uh, a goddess for the wisdom, for education, to all the songs, melodies, whatever. All the art which is surrounding us is the boon supposed to be from the goddess Saraswati. So here we are going with the short Saraswati Vandana to entertain you all. Is the music audible? Is the music audible, ma'am? Not clear. Yeah, you are audible. The it's not clear. Music is I request you to. Music is audible, right? It's not clear. It's, very it's not low. clear. It's very low. Thank <laughs> you. 
from my side thank you so much for listening me unmute unmute yourself ms azra it's thank you so much shikha sharma ji it's absolute pleasure to have sunday evening a discussion about the future education the very next day of diwali and milad the month i welcome all my dignitaries cwsir guests panelists viewers followers friends and students with great joy and immense evaluation celebration i feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all prabhi presented here for catching us with all your kind consideration about panel discussion in the context of national education policy today live 15th november 2020 at ist 630 i am profusely elated to take an opportunity to introduce the founder of cwsir that is charles walter society for innovation and research the founder dr smita tiwari balia ji one of the most admirable personality with humble teachership rose to the current position the literator with sahitya ratna i would also like to welcome our lovely guests the panelists dr pramod mahajan ji honorary patron cwsir and principal director shaja indian school ua our guest dr venandadhan p pillai honorary patron cwsir and director curriculum singapore international school mumbai i could not miss mr swami nathan ji the panelist for today ambassador cwsir and principal international delhi public school uganda i'd like to welcome mrs vandana kohli ji state coordinator cw sir and vice president abraham lincoln shiksha society gurgaon our panelists for today i heartily welcome mr ashish and agnihotri ji member cw sir and principal cg public school lakshmangarh i could not miss mrs malka grewal vice president CWSIR Britannica International School Ludhiana Mrs Malika Grewal ji I am fortunate to have an eminent personality to share her thoughts and proceed to call up our guest Dr Pramod ji further to address the panel It's all yours Mrs Malika ji Thank you thank you so much. I uh, good evening everyone. I'm much uh, privileged to be here today to extend profound wishes and greetings to all the eminent guests who have joined us here today on behalf of CWSIR. Okay before we proceed I would uh, just like to talk a little bit about CWSIR and of course uh, the Meetex platform. It's rightly said one can achieve anything as wish when we work together with a common purpose to uplift people beyond inequality and gender differences 
I welcome all of you to Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research, where great careers, great choices, and endless opportunities start. CWSIR was founded in 2019 and is an independent research institute based in Gorakhpur, India. The mandate of the CWSIR is to promote and support research and innovation through human resource development, including science, technology, academics, literature, and of course, the list would go on. Well, CWSIR provides platform for capacity building of individual and organization from world recognized institutions through various programs. CWSIR team is also recognized by national and international peers and decision makers for the quality and relevance of their work often done as leaders of the teams. CWSIR aims to provide a network for expanding the spirit of creativity, innovation, and digital literacy in academia. CWR, CWSIR also provides a platform for scholars who are interested in sharing their original views, knowledge, and research findings with an international audience. Well, about MeTechs, it's a platform for speakers to unleash new ideas, inspire, and inform. All MeTech events present multiple issues and a diversity of voices. It's an independent body of CWSIR. All events present here, presented here are the multiple issues and diversity of voices from many disciplines. MeTech is grassroots initiative. It's created in the spirit of CWSIR's overall mission to research and discover ideas worth spreading. It brings the spirit to CWSIR to communities around the globe through MeTech events. These events are organized by passionate individuals who seek to uncover new ideas and to share the latest research. Well, with this, I place in record my sincere thanks to the founder CWSIR, Dr. Smita Tewari Palia, and yes, I would also like to say every moment is a golden one for the one who has a vision to recognize it. Amongst us, we have such a dynamic personality. And other than the President CWSIR, Dr. Abhishek Pandey, I extend a heartfelt, heartfelt welcome to you. Well, now the task of today evening starts and begins for me. The task of introducing our chief guest of the day. It's a great privilege. I know this idea is a difficult one, but the thought that he is a man of virtue and simplicity. I feel elated to introduce him to everyone this evening. After all, he is a living inspiration to all of us. If taken a closer look at the alchemy, the achieving person, two distinct virtues pop up besides perseverance and hard work. These two are the pioneering spirit and willingness. It gives today, he is a living uh, idiom of today. He is a man who happened to be born at the right time and the right place. May I take the opportunity to invite Mr. Pramod Mahajan, Director, Principal, Sharja Indian School, UAE. Good evening, sir, and welcome to the show. Although it's your show, your day, every day, of course, because without you, CWSIR, we cannot even think about it. So, sir, may we have you today to address our other gathering for the evening? Thank you. And good evening to one and all. Thank you, Ms. Malka Grewal, Vice President, CWSIR. If we can say, it's CWSIR is a bunch of diamonds. So, C is unique in that. And I'm really honored by your words. I don't know up to what extent I am worthwhile for that. But let's begin today's discussion, thanking Dr. Abhishek Pandey and the founder, uh, Mrs. Tiwari. It is their brainchild, which is rocking nowadays. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start discussing about National Education Policy 2020. What are the unique features? What are the challenges and what not? And what are the big question marks? So being the chief guest of today's session, I will share my some of my views and my intellectual panelist will enlighten to everyone. And Dr. Venu, the expert of today's session, 
will conclude with his expert comments and surely we wanted this session to be interactive so each one and every one feel free to ask the questions bombard the question this is another diwali today by bombarding your question so let us start nep is coming after 34 years and if i have to define nep in one sentence i will say nep is that which is given giving a chance to a student to be a dancer who is a plumber also who is playing cricket very nicely shown interest in badminton singing very well has a passion for engineering but presently working for becoming a doctor so multiple tasking multitasking multi entries multi exit that's the main feature of nep after 34 years the road path is open for what purpose equitable knowledge society for providing high quality education to all with sustainable development goals sustainable development goals development goals for living globally development goals for global well being community participation it's not only the school it's not only the teachers it's not only the school leaders it's not only the politician it's not only the students it's not only the parents but it's community too now commun community involvement will have its own essence for nep use of technology now those days were gone when we are thinking about technology we are learning about technology we are understanding about technology now we have to use the technology learning through technology that's a main feature so we need not to study the technology but we have to embrace the technology we have to use the technology so that is another feature if we analyze deeply the national education policy the first factor is early child care education which is called the foundation years of the teaching learning process nursery kg1 kg2 grade 1 and grade 2 this five years foundational years panch tantra of nep these five years we have to train the students for what for their physical well being for their mental well being for their thought process and we have to take them out from the technique of rote memory but the thought process thinking beyond so these five years there will be a play way method there will be a technical aspects there will be a dancing there will be a singing there will be a literacy there will be a numeracy and what not but with ultimate care in one word if i have to say we have to ensure the smiling dynamics on the faces of those young stars and along with that they should rock they should rock for literacy they should rock rock for numeracy they should have a critical thinking they should have the attitude of risk taking attributes of scientific temperament so that is the first aspect second one is fundamental literacy and that fundamental literacy will be starting with the primary stage that is third fourth and fifth where the effective governance will play a vital role third fourth and fifth we have to train them for fundamental literacy and numeracy f l n fundamental literacy and numeracy that is for third fourth and fifth these are those three years where the students will play with numbers gamification the students will enhance their linguistic depth 
the students will go closer to the nature. Effective governance plays a vital role in that. After that fundamental and preparatory stage, fundamental stage is nursery, KG1, KG2, 1 and 2. Preparatory stage is grade 3, 4 and 5. Then the middle stage, 6, 7, 8, where we have introduced the experiential learning, learning by doing, where we are giving full freedom to the students to commit the blunders, learn by your mistakes. Commit the blunders, analyze it, find out the root cause, reanalyze it, redo it, replan it, and achieve the mastery learning. That's the middle stage where they will mix up with community. Internship. Internship is the main feature for the middle stage. Within that internship, full autonomy on the shoulder of the students. They can go to the electrician, they can go to the plumber, they can go to carpenter, they can go to musician, they can go to dancer, they can go to anywhere, but they have to observe some bagless days. And during that bagless days, they have to understand the empathy, they have to understand the sympathy, they have to understand the need and requirement of the society. They have to involve themselves of the futuristic aspect of the teaching learning process. So that is the middle classes. After that, secondary classes, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. These four years, these four years are mean for the proactive teaching learning process of a student. These four years gives the complete academic ownership to the students. Within these four years, they have to decide what they want to be, how they want to be, what they want to learn, how they want to learn, where they want to learn, and for what they want to learn. During this 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, there will be a academic score credit bank. Academic score credit bank will play a vital role to decide a child. It's a holistic development. It's not only the academics. It's not only the internship. It's not only the skills. It's not only the critical thinking. It's not only the risk taking. It's not only the inclusiveness, but it is beyond that. And that academic credit score decides the future of the child. And that academic credit score starts from grade nine, goes up to grade 12, and when the child is in the grade nine, his interest, his skills will be identified when the child is in sixth, seventh, and eighth. And the foundation will be laid down when the child is in third, fourth, and fifth. And the child was prepared when he is in nursery to KG1, KG2, 1, and 2. So these are the aspects of that credit score. Beyond that, there is a lot of deformation and formation. Now, this NEP is giving chance to the educationist. They are taking it away from the uh, political views. They are taking it away from the bureaucracy. And they are giving it to the educationist in the form of NCPFECE. Nothing but the National Curriculum Framework of Pedagogy, Early Child Care Education. How they are going to do it? By reduction in curriculum. So there are a lot of confusion about reduction in curriculum. If they are going to... Uh, way of some chapters or some modules. It's not like that. It is crisping of curricula. For what purpose? For the core content. The core contents are used up to a large extent. And in that core content, in that core curriculum, there will be a lot of integration. Sports is integrated. Games are integrated. Art is integrated. Craft is integrated. So that integration means you have to teach the maths while using the Kathak Naktam. You have to teach the physics by using the dynamics of football playing. You have to teach them chemistry by using the knowledge of craft. You have to teach them English by singing the poem in front of them, by uh, reciting the poem in front of them. So these are the core content. It means all the subjects are 
crisp within one and then they are doing it it is just like that suppose a child is preparing for 10th standard so whatever be useful for 10th standard that will be taken care of in 9th and whatever not used beyond that that will be less focused i am not telling it will be removed that will be less prioritized so the another concept of reduction in curriculum is prioritization of the core content then critical thinking interactive classes interactive classes again technology technology and only the technology but using the technology not to be used by technology i am using the word not to be used by technology but using the technology it's my firm belief no one can replace the teacher no one can replace the classroom teaching but the techno savvy teachers will definitely replace the traditional teacher so this is the time for the teachers to be techno savvy to come out of their comfort zone next is mental and physical well being now it's health hygiene mental and physical well being well being from every corner what makes you mentally happy what makes you physically strong those are the aspect what are the basic concept of health and hygiene that will be taken care of textbooks local to global you have to choose your own curriculum and you have to design your own uh, textbook examination it is not the examination now it will be the assessment what a child knows in a better way assess that one and guide the child accordingly so they are planning the assessment at the end of grade 3 grade 5 grade 8 grade 10 and grade 12 so there is a lot of again confusion that thing because of the nap 10th and 12th will be removed out nothing like that again that academic credit score bank and there will be assessment at third fifth and eighth also but that assessment is again not the examination at all that assessment is not like you are cramming and omitting in the examination that assessment is to find out in what area you are good in what area you are still doing better and what areas you can do under so that is the another aspect of the uh, this one for that they have developed a particular tool a particular pedagogy called parak parak everybody knows and the uh, our uh, panelist will speak on that then there are sedds sustainable goals sustainable development sustainable achievements all those concepts will be in the consideration so overall if we say it's a fantastic draft depends on the how it will be implemented who will implement teacher how they will be implement by the training how they will be trained self trained self motivation becoming techno savvy coming out of the comfort zone accepting the challenge taking the risk and choosing the way what will be the road map no one will give the road map you have to find out your own road map and you have to follow and you have to move on that report cards will be 360 degree progress card the child whatever with the child doing in the classroom anak notes the profile of a child credit score internship skilled all those things will be taken care of this is the first time when the child will be evaluating himself or herself the peer group will be evaluating the friend in a different way and the teachers will be evaluating as well as the outsource agencies like cbsc or any other examining board they will be evaluating that thing so these are the basic features this is my prima facie thought once again i will request all the panelists to be very crisp and enlighten us with the crystal clear ideas because there are a lot of confusion and then i will request our moderator to take as many questions as possible because i we want it cwsir is specially mean for research and innovation we don't want to follow the traditional method we want the interaction we want the dialogue we want innovation we want something project based something research based with those words i hand over to our uh, today's moderator see the versatile lady none other than 
Mrs. Azra Sultana, once again thanking Mrs. Malka Grewal, our Vice President, for her kind words. And ma'am, it's a promise we will prove ourselves. Thank you. Inshallah. You are one of the most celebrated foreign service dignitary I'm in connected with. The man of distinct vision and fountainhead of illuminating ideas, an idol of knowledge and expertise, Mr. Pramoji. And you are one of the inspiration to all of us. Thank you so very much. Moving on to our panel round before that, I would like to continue with few lines what Sir has told. Truly admirable, truly acceptable. Yes, today's and uh, these days, the talk in education sector, it has become very much versatile. We are here to have discussion and work on pros and cons of National Education Policy 2020. Central government approved National Education Policy 2020. Many major changes after 34 years. Yes, as a Sir said, from school education to higher education approved by cabinet. Changed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. It envisages achieving a lot. Yes, admission rate from pre-primary to higher, higher secondary by 2030 and with 50% in higher education to get to government where they wanted to spend on education form with 4.43 percentage to 6 percentage GDP. Yes, as the country decides to adopt the new education policy, it is to be comprehended as a radical step since education decides the future of the nation the destiny of its people indeed by the grace of Almighty God. The impact will be a long lasting one. The choices, journeys and destinations of individual citizens and nations will be collectively shaped by these policy decisions. So what is being changed from first commission, 1948, the journey where it started led to the secondary education commission which was taken place in 1952 with the setup of Kothari Commission, which held in 1964, if I'm not wrong. Proceeded with 1986, the National Policy of Education, NPE, with numerous modifications held in 1992 in RTE, that is Right to Education Act, and standing with National Education Policy this 29th July 2020, shot NEP national education policy with quality of education, focusing on holistic, integrated, enjoyable, and engaging with health access and equity designed vision and framework. As an academic, we don't conflict with India. Its diversity is its identity. We are here with fragmented system or decentralized system that helps reach the millions that lives across the country. The NEP 2020 envisages a strongly centralized system that is the National Education Commission, which is gonna head on. Discussion and dealing with the questions as a moderator, I'd like to go ahead with all your yes. Shall we start, my dear panelist? I am here waiting for Yes, from my panelists. Shall we go ahead with an interacting session, with an effective session? Yes. Is yes. it yes from all? Yes. 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 So I have, let us start with a very small and, you know, thought, which I have somewhere. What are the misconceptions people have? How can we combat? this misconceptions and communicate more effectively. So let's go with our first panelist. I request Mr. Swami Nathanji, a principal international Delhi public school, Uganda. I request you to proceed with the first query of this panel discussion. Good evening to all. The evening, miscommunication, sir. yes, ma'am. Um, since you underlined the word a misconception from the parent side, uh, there is a general yes. uh, process or thinking going on among the parents that 
whether the class 10 board examination has been cancelled or not. This is the most important question which has been uh, circulating, especially in okay. my country. I mean, uh, where I'm working now, right now in Uganda, it has been uh, taken that the board examination has been cancelled. All right. And uh, number of school years have been increased. They didn't understand that the pre-primary has been just incorporated with the existing system. They thought that everything has been changed and it is to increase to 13 years. The schooling is going to increase to 13 years. That is what the misunderstanding taking place. Uh, the reason being that uh, even the Facebook we have seen some of the posting made by the some uh, persons where they shown the different kind of structuring of the schools. So instead of having primary as, uh, I mean, the first five years, they thought that up to class five, it is taken as a different level. So after class five, the child has to appear for your examination, clear the examination, then only the child may be promoted to class six. Again, in class eight, they have to write an examination, then they will be promoted to class nine. So these kind of uh, things are going on. Okay. Can we proceed with the next panelist, please? Uh, I request, I request Mrs. Vandana Kohliji. Thank you so much. Good evening to one and all. And I'm so, uh, it is a pleasure sharing the platform with all these eminent educationists. The misconceptions are many. Honestly speaking, I have been interacting not only with the parents, I interacted with principals also. And they were honest enough to accept that even they are not clear on, on certain aspects. And the major challenge is that you can train the teachers and students and everybody. But the way Mr. Swaminathan said that parents, they have different perceptions and misconceptions. So to clear that out and to send the message across will certainly take time. This is on papers. The, the way we say that there's a difference between the cup and the lip. And this difference and the gap is too much here. We have read. And even after reading this, to deliver it, deliver it to the teachers, to the students and the parents would take a lot of time. Everybody will take time to perceive it properly. The way it has been decided, everybody is perceiving it in different. And to come to a common conclusion will take time. This is my call on this. Thank you so much, ma'am. I am really thankful to Mr. Swami Nathanji and uh, Mrs. Vandana Kohli ji. I would like to proceed with Mr. Ashish and Agnihotri ji with the same question, please. Please unmute yourself. So we can't hear you. Please unmute. Please unmute. Mr. Ashish, Mr. Ashish ji, are you there? Mr. Ashish ji, your voice is not audible. I, I request you to unmute yourself, please. I think he is not there. No, he is no, he's there. very much there. By name, he is not there. It is his Vivo, 1727. Achha, Vivo. Ah, Vivo, 1727 is there. Ashish, sir, I request you to unmute yourself, please. Can't hear you, sir. I request you to unmute. Can the host unmute possibly? Yeah. Oh, it is, uh, he has to do that thing. I am asking it to asking him to unmute. He has to unmute. Yeah. Yes, that done. is it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ashish. I request you to please proceed. 
Now, hello. Hello, Hi. sir. Hello, good evening. Now you can hear me? Absolutely, sir. I can hear you very well. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, as we are talking today, uh, today pros and cons of NEP 2020. So, ma'am, my first question is that it has been mentioned BA course would be the four years. So I am totally agree with it that BA course would be the four years. If a doctor goes for the medical course, five year course is there. At the same time, if we are going for the BTEC, so child has to complete four years after that, MTEC two years, the teacher who teaches in the class and preparing children for the medical courses, engineering courses, why earlier it was a beard for one year, now beard is for the two years. If beard is for the four years and teacher must learn how to interact. Teacher, this is you can say very good point, good advantage is in NEP 2020, but government did not decide anything more than 80 lakh teachers, existing teachers who have completed their year course, one year or two year course, but they are not technological scary, computer scary, at the same time, they do not know what is a TSI, telling, showing, and involving. That the main point the government has taken, be it should be the four years, I am totally agree with it. Second, government is asking that vocational course should be encouraged. I do agree with you, okay, this, uh, with the NEP 2020, but at the same time, when the government is deciding, that multidisciplinary universities should be encouraged. It is possible where IIT college is there, child will go there for uh, dancing. If child will go in IIT college or medical college for this, uh, your uh, co-curricular activities, this thing somewhere, its concept is not clear about multidisciplinary university. Second thing is that, Already my colleagues, panelist, Mr. Swami Nathan has told board examination. Somewhere NEP 2020 is indicating 10th class that has to be board examination should not be there. At the same time, board examination, can, if the child works fail, that is, it can be second time, third time. So somewhere it's a misconception is there. Our existing teachers, they, do, they don't get the proper training either by the government or from the private organizations. That's why our CCE, Comprehensive Continuous Evaluation, which was already at the time of Mr. Kapil Sibbal, in, uh, inculcated in our CBSC curriculum, it was totally failed in Indian education system. The reason was that our teachers, existing teachers, they were not trained properly. They did not get the training. After that, same time, a student did not get also proper opportunity to learn what is the CCE pattern is there. So minus two points are there. Beard code, it is for the four years. It's really well appreciated is there. But at the same time, government must think about existing teachers. Great, Mr. Ashish Ji. Great, Mr. Ashish Ji. I, I, uh, I really appreciate you fairly accurately and in time. I appreciate uh, my three panelists. The first question uh, that I would uh, like to proceed with my second speech is actually better of two. As a uh, men's speech. Um, Mrs. Uh, uh, Azra, ma'am, one minute, please. Like Mr. Ashish, uh, that BA is, BA is, if you can uh, mute yourself, please. Yeah. BA is not for four years. Beard is not at all for four years. Sir, sir, sir. Sir, the proposed beard, beard, beard is, is for... Beard is, that beard is, it's a four years along with your graduation. So it will be like BSc aid or BA aid, like that. Those who have completed the beard for one year or beard for two years, they will be taken into consideration. There is no doubt. Yes, they are going to keep some examinations to check the competencies of the teachers. 
but the beard is like they are transforming it in a way that it should be bsc aid or ba b aid and that is for four years I mean it will remain only for one year this is one of the greatest misconception among the teachers so they are introducing the theory of the teaching yes, absolutely. process from the first year itself another yes. thing is no one is going to scrap 10th or 12th that will be included within that 9 to 12 those two exams will be outsourced and two exams 9th and 11th will be internal exams and the academic credit score bank will be maintained carry on please uh, sir i have a list of some number of questions from my own uh, fellow principals uh, groups and uh, many more are there with number of uh, doubts they are seeing us live i would like to request my panelists so to be a profound in their answers and i have some number of at least 5 to 10 questions so that we can have uh, you know some little con confusion and some uh, clarity in our confusions what we are leading with so i would like to go ahead with my uh, next question uh, i request uh, my panelists to answer me for this teaching students in mother tongue okay will help inculcate human values term as per nep 2020 how far do you agree that it is true and is not possible otherwise can we can we proceed with mr swami nathan ji if I'm not wrong, my question is, uh, you know, if you want, I would like to repeat it. Teaching students in mother tongue, it is there in our NEP 2020, right? Will help inculcate human values term, right? How far do you agree that it is going to work? Okay, my point of view in this regard is for better understanding of the beginners, teaching some concepts in mother tongue is right. At the same time, Ignoring the language which is common completely and then focusing only on based on mother tongue teaching process will leads to a lot of complication when the child comes to the higher class. Absolutely. Have they told that uh, all the classes are they going to learn in mother tongue? They have said, I think so. I, I don't know exactly. Maybe the primary education should be in mother tongue. What about the higher classes? Suppose it is up to grade imagine, five they have been declared. Yeah, what about the class six? If the child want to shift to a school where the medium of language is English and up to five, the child has learned everything in Tamil or any other language, let it be Hindi or Telugu, whatever it is. What will happen to the child? Why I am telling this? Because I faced the same problem during my school days. Till class 10, I learned in English medium school. But due to my financial situation and family situation, when I was forced to learn in a Tamil medium school, I mean in the government school, I was able to succeed only with the help of the teachers, but it was not an easy task for me. So suppose if the same thing happens with the child up to class five, the child is learning in Tamil medium or any other medium school and class six onwards, if they want to continue the education in a CBC school, so you mean to say you need to keep this call as an open for parents on their wish or the management on their wish? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It should be so, according to the convenience of the learners first. Okay. We have to identify the type of learners, ability of the learners. Then we have to go about it. This is Vandana Kohliji. What is your opinion on this? My opinion here is that uh, in private schools in India, generally, we use English as the language. And okay. but in government run schools, especially you know where there are first generation learners, a child who doesn't know the any language except the language spoken by the parents. So if we immediately ask him to adapt English, that would be difficult. So in the as the government has segregated the first five years, so introducing the basics when he enters the school can be in the local language or in the in their mother tongue but slowly and gradually since we all accept the fact that english is world over recognized language it could be amalgated little bit of english little bit of local language and slowly they can move on to english but for first generation learners it would be very very difficult if we restrict the learning to English or Hindi, anything. So I would propose that uh, depending on the situation, you cannot generalize a rule, but for depending on the situation, it has to be amalgamated 
in the private school, English has been running and would still run, but in government school, but first generation learners in the initial years, other tongue, and slowly and gradually we move on to uh, English. That's it. That would be my proposal. Like my, these are my thoughts. Uh, sorry, great, ma'am. I consider it as a great honor to hear from you. I uh, request the same yeah, for my. Uh, Swami Nathan wanted to say something. He wants yeah, to add please. something. Yeah. Um, just uh, to adding on uh, to the first question, when you said, "What are the misconceptions?" Even this is one of the misconception among the parents. Uh, they are thinking yeah, that absolutely. after the class five, so many, sir. child will have only yeah. the native language to be used for learning. This is no, 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 no. This is yeah, yeah. under section four point one one. It does not say it is mandatory. Yeah. It is an option. It is either English or their native regional language. Right. One school can have both the options. So it is okay. not mandatory that you have to make the education in uh, the native language only. Can be an option. So that Let is what me, I said. Uh, there are yeah. so many misconceptions among the teachers, principals, and administrators too. So it will take time. Let me let me clear this misconception. I had a word with Mr. Dr. Kasturi Ranjanji regarding this. See, the NEP is a draft. And it's a state issue, it's a central issue, and it's a facility provided to the school as well as the stakeholders. It is multilingual, tri language formula. So it may be a mother tongue, it may be a English, it may be a Hindi, it may be a regional language, it may be a state language. As for the need and requirement and availability, it can be chosen. But there is nothing mandatory from NEP. So the thing is, it all depends on the state, it all depends on the parents, it all depends on the school, and that will be taken care of. There was one again misconception which was in the very beginning, it is asked the students will go for dancing in the IITs. Yes, why not? Dancing is a perfect art. And they are rocking like anything, they are a real scientist. So those subjects will be there in IITs, already it is there in IIM. Already it is there in IIM. So these are the misconceptions actually, but those subjects will be there and those subjects will be there not as a co-curricular activities rather than it's a, as a mainstream. Mrs. Azra Sultana. Please. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Ashish ji, I would like to have a, you to put down a point on it, please. Mr. Ashish ji. Mr. Ashish, are you there? Okay, moving on to the next question. Uh, as I am keeping an eye on time limit and respecting our viewers too and my uh, you know guests and panelists their time. Hello, ma'am, please. Yeah, Hello. please. I request to ask you to be alert with, uh, on and off with your uh, functions. There is, there is some audio audio issues from Mr. Ashish. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So now it is uh, so highlight, ahead. highlight with the one minute, please. I request you to uh, make it first. Now, now, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Yeah, yes, it yes. is okay. It is fine. Government is taking the initiative to bring that six percent of GDP must be invested, utilized for the education industry. Really appreciable effort is there. But right now we can see in most of the state like this, your Bihar, Dharkhand, Odisha, where education department, they are not able to utilize 3% of the GDP in the education department. Many, we are not talking only about our private schools. We are talking about the government schools for NEP 2020 is applicable for the both schools, government schools as well as private schools. Many government schools are there where the teachers' vacancy is there, but it is not being filled by the state government. Whatever their uh, issues are there, that we don't want to go because it may be in the political way. But if the 6% GDP has to be invested in education industry, and especially the main part of this GDP has, still I'm repeating the same thing, our 80 lakh existing teachers, their training must be done in the proper way so that more than 30 crore students 
who are getting benefit with the 80 lakh children 80 lakh uh, people truly truly yeah. i agree sir truly i agree i appreciate i consider this as a really uh, value and glad that you are here with us i would like to proceed with my next question i request yeah. ashish sir please mute yourself please yeah uh, my question for my beloved panelists is here uh, the biggest challenge Okay, what is the biggest challenge which is lying in implementing this NEP for school management? And how can we further take up by the management of students? Okay. I would like to start up this with Mr. Ashish itself as he was uh, talking about the teacher's uh, point of view. So, Mr. Ashish, I request, please. Uh, highlight on this point. What is the biggest challenge which is lying in implementing this? Because, you know, copy and uh, drafting is different. Now the time is implementing coming days. So implementing this NEP for school management I'm talking about and then for the management teachers and the students, how it is going to work? Can you please highlight on it? Yes, ma'am. As already I had discussed because implementing NEP 2020 what we are, we are talking that is about future, but how it has to be implemented is the current era. Especially this uh, in COVID-19, many of our existing teachers, good teachers due to the financial crisis, they had to leave this industry. But now it has to be implemented. Management has to take work with the existing teachers. To me, if I talk, as a uh, member of the managing committee and how I have to train my teachers at the same time we have to train our parents also. Uh, right now the condition is that parents don't want to send their children in the school at the same time teachers do not want to get associated themselves in the education industry last eight or nine yes, months. Sir. Mr. But, Ashish, your, your side, internet connection is unstable, I guess. Yeah, please go ahead with another panelist because there is some issue with his connectivity and the sound. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. I request uh, Mrs. Vandana Kohli ji to highlight on this, the biggest challenge of implementing NEP on uh, school management. Let us wear their... Uh, shoes and uh, you know realize what is the pain and then they have to look after the teachers and then students so can you please thank highlight you. on this thank you Azra. this question is very very close to my heart the policy is in is in the right direction but what is critical is the execution getting good marks fear of failure and the child is known by marks this this has been happening in the past but we have drafted the policy, the government has drafted the policy to, to you know, uh, to, to remove all these mal uh, thoughts and practices, whatever we may call it. But where is the infrastructure? And where so, are the teachers who are going to give and deliver what is stated in the policy? A lot of education has to happen around teaching. A lot of money has to be spent on this. I am delivering the knowledge is the mindset of the teachers. Are the teachers trained enough to create the love of learning in the, in the student? Are the teachers open enough to accept this policy? Since years, the teacher thinks I am delivering. Learning by doing and giving them uh, opportunities for that, the teachers have to change their perceptions. Are we ready? Are the teachers ready? This is my question to all to ponder about. And human and physical, both infrastructure to sum up, we are lacking on that. Do we have enough infrastructure? And they said, we have the G GDP. Are we using it? And how effectively can we use the GDP if, uh, allocated? Are we efficient enough to use the provisions given by the government? So these are many educating parents. How would they perceive and they would not misuse the points like as exit 
and entry, multiple exit and entry should not be misused as our supporting schedule cost has been, you know, everybody would agree. This, there was a proposal of supporting underprivileged people, the schedule cost, but how it has been misused. Similarly, exit and entry system, I hope it is not misused by the parents. So there are many, many loopholes then training, a lot of training, and we are propagating a vocational education. Where are the teachers? So, madam, you mean to say uh, that uh, the biggest challenge what management is going to face is to train the teachers. Train the teachers, resource persons. change the perceptions of the teachers. The teachers think we are teaching. You know, training them to teach, the, to give opportunities to learning by doing. First, they have to be trained. So I think we lack both in human and physical infrastructure. That would be great, a very, great. very big, big challenge. Great, great, ma'am. You knocked me off my feet. I request uh, Mr. Swami Nathanji to highlight on it. Can we have Mr. Swami Nathanji, please? Yes, madam. I agree with uh, Vandana, madam, re regarding the things what she said. And uh, regarding the implementation, if you see, as stated by one of the panelists, it is not uh, how we are going to implement it is more or less about uh, what we are going to implement. First, that should be understood by all the stakeholders of the education. What are Correct. they going to implement? Correct. Without knowing what you are going to do, how we are going to do, if you are thinking it is useless. So first we have to understand what we are going to implement. And one important aspect, even I felt very happy on seeing the NEP 2020 is they are considering and giving more importance for the pre-primary children. Earlier, yes, even till this academic year, if you see, each and every school is having their own curriculum for pre-primary. There is no uniform curriculum. So the Absolutely. schools which are well-to-do, they offer a costly curriculum. The school which is on the lower level, they are not able to provide that. They teach alphabets, numbers, that's all. So now this NEP is going to give you a standardized curriculum even for the pre-primary kids, which is going to set the right foundation for the learners. That means these many years, what we have done, instead of preparing the soil for planting and growing the plants, we have been bothering only about the plants. Now this NEP is focusing on preparing the soil, selection of seeds, growing the plant, every process is to be taken care. But again, how it is to be done, slowly, slowly, step by step, without harming anybody, without causing too much confusion, it should be done. And for that, all the stakeholders of education should be made clear what is going to happen. But that is not done till now. It is only on the papers. Definitely, sir. As uh, we all know, for uh, uh, every Agra action, Agra there Agra is an equally and reaction. And yeah, all Agra positive Agra and negative aspects will be standing all together at a time. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, my uh, honorable chief guest, sir, Mr. Yeah. Pramoji, please. Sir, uh, in this context, again, this is a big misconception. Who is going to train? Teachers are going to get trained by themselves. This pandemic has proved that thing. You no know, more training is required externally. If they, they have a will, they have a wish, they can do wonders. And the world has seen that thing. The teachers who could not switch on the computers now rocking on the computers. So the thing is, it is will and wish. She don't depend on others. If, if you want to see the change, you have to change yourself. And now in this world, if you are not transferring yourself, transforming yourself, skilling and reskilling and upscaling yourself, nothing will happen. And this NAP has given that scope. Uh, Mrs. Vandana has very rightly said, who is going to do that thing? No, they have to do themselves. There is no option left. This pandemic has proved that thing. Another thing is, if you take the results and all, See, there is no role of teaching in the coaching classes and the five-star schools and the air-conditioned schools and all. The result of NEET and IITs proved that within this pandemic, the students have independently learned and their result is fantastic, far, far better than last three, four years. So it shows that the NAP has shown the path. We have to create our own roadmap and we have to follow that thing. In spite of telling that thing, what the stakeholder will do, who will train, who will not train, this is all secondary things. The thing is, if you wanted to get trained, if you wanted to transform yourself, you have to do that thing. And teachers, yes, that academic bossing, 
uh, Mrs. Vandana Kohli has very rightly pointed out that academic bossing, they have to come out of that comfort zone of academic bossing and they have to give the ownership of teaching learning process to the students. That is the solution for that. And another thing is nothing is mandatory. Entry, multiple entry and multiple exits cannot be misused because there will be a system and process of academic score credit bank. So it will not be misused if you use that tool properly. That is the you know point for that. Thank you. Very impressive, sir. Kindness is the language which the deaf can hear and blind can see. Okay, uh, based on this multiple entry and exit, I have one question for my panelists here. Multiple entry and exit during undergraduation courses, okay, based on pedagogical structure, that is 5 plus 3 plus 4, 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. How it could be a realistic? Don't you think so? A candidate pursuing that undergraduation course will have one sort of receiving the degree and moving on to job. So is this a call open or friendly or is it really realistic? Can you please put down your points on it? Can I have a Mr. Swami Nathanji on this? I mean, my point of view, this multiple entry and exit during the schooling days should be limited. Okay, suppose if the student exit due to some factors, within how much time he has to continue again. They cannot take it completely granted. Okay, I complete class eight, I go out. Again, after two years, I step in. Again, after two years, I go out. It should not be like that. There should be a time limit. Especially no, my dear sir. Here, the government has issue. said one point. Nathan, there is some sound uh, issue. Yeah, uh, let, me, uh, let me just broadline it. I mean to say underline it, that if even one year or two years you qualify your advanced program degree, you will be benefited with diploma, a copy sheet, a mark sheet, right? So is this, uh, how can you, how can we say on a platform that it should have a limit? So please uh, put down a point on it. No, I am talking about the schooling structure, ma'am, not in the, after the schooling. Okay, you are talking in the graduation level. After the graduation, they can go for one year diploma and then they can continue their higher studies, you are saying. Yes, yes, true. So that will be a useful option. That is really useful because it will help them in one way or the other. But my concern is during the schooling, this should not happen too much within the first 12 years of schooling. Got it, sir. Mrs. Vandana Kohli ji. Actually, can I have again, your brief points on it? Yes. Uh, actually, again, the way I said, I when I'm, I was talking about misconception, and sir uh, said that it is very clear and Pramod ji said that if it is used properly. So the underline is if it is used properly. And let me be very, very, like maybe it might sound a little blatant, but the policy has been aligned with what is happening globally. But if we take the situations at home, people might use it in a negative way and entry and exit. If I would be the educator, I would attach clauses to that. They should have enough reasoning backed by why are they exiting and why are they entering. I can understand people, you know, sometimes they, they are posted outside or maybe they're not well or maybe they lose interest. But then every entry and exit as per me, should be backed by a proper reason and it should be validated. This is what is my limited um, opinion on that. Somehow I am not too convinced that it should be so openly and grossly used. There should be a lot of restrictions attached. This is what I feel because let us accept that the mindsets of the people in India and the mindsets of and the exposure and mindset of people abroad are totally, totally different. So we have to keep in mind our, um, you know, what is happening around us in India. That's it. Fine, ma'am. Imagination is more important than knowledge. I truly agree with you. I request Mr. Ashish, sir, to highlight on it, please. Uh, 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 Ms. Azra, yes, kindly, kindly take the views of Dr. Venu also, because uh, time is limited. 
we have to uh, utilize him also because he is a expert minute. person ma'am i would just need 2 minutes to ask a particular question to pramod ji so keep in mind that and yeah. then you can uh, continue with the i have a very particular question for mr swaminathan and pramod mahajan ji i would i would surely want to ask that from both of them so yeah. Just give me those two three minutes before you wind up. Sure, sure. Noted, madam. Noted. I request uh, Venu Nandaji to uh, please uh, put down some of your, your thoughts on it. So, I available, Mr. Uh, Doctor Venu Nandaji. Uh, thank you, Azra Sultana. Venu Nathan. Simply only that. Venu Nathan. Difficult. Difficult to pronounce. Venu Nathan. That's my name. Okay, thank you very much indeed. I thought of you know concluding all these things about I mean glow I mean holistically towards the end, and that's what I have been told. So now the question is the lateral entry and exit pattern, whether it is useful or not. It is certainly because a three-year degree course, we have to study for three years. Just before the examination, I'm not able to pay the examination fee. I have to go out. Then. So after studying for 3 years you know if i have to go out without any certification it is it is a waste of time energy and money so it is always a good idea to provide a certificate at the end of the first year and after second year a diploma and when the student is able to finish the third year a degree program and the fourth year is a research oriented that's how it is designed so it is a great idea and it is not a new new idea actually it is in, a, in one of the ugc documents it is mentioned actually this Agreed. lateral entry and lateral exit is already there in place but we have not been having it is mostly in the vocational area this has been in uh, in place at the moment it is proposed in the regular education also which is a welcome thing actually we have to have this lateral entry and lateral exit options for the students thank you very That's rightly right. very rightly said dr absolutely uh, sir very rightly said this is there and now this nep is focusing on that it is a very very welcome step and let me tell you throughout the globe it is not india is this what is the problem with india nothing indian scientists indian doctors indian educationists are rocking throughout the world and for them it is necessary now one year they have completed in india one year they are completing in cambridge one year they are going to australia if you take the microsoft chairperson and ibp and whatever be you name the company they have done that thing and because of that they are successful so this is a very welcome step as dr benu has very rightly said it was there now we have to the time has come we have to prioritize it in a better way thank you sir as i say leaders are always leaders a genuine leader is not a searcher for consensus but a molder of consensus so i request uh, dr venu nathan ji please highlight on the same aspect very much close to introduction of vocational courses at grade 6 according to new policy what is that you uh, think is good for students grade 6 to select the vocational courses is it okay for them or it's a uh, call of again an action and uh, extra workload for teachers if i ask you a question will you be comfortable to learn a new language now i am a quick learner i okay. would love to that's great i mean if this option is given to a child he will not ask any question he will start learning it yes he will be quick in learning also but <laughs> you ask the question to me i will think multiple times should i take this burden unnecessary burden so it is always better to start early a language even there was there were some discussions about i mean starting to teach in local language or i mean uh, and later convert to english but i will say that you start even for first generation i will suggest that you may start from the right from the very beginning and we are not teaching the parents we are teaching the students and this learning has to happen in school not at home home learning is only an extension of what is learned at school and tuition parent involvement all these things should be a triangular thing happening uh, within the school system itself and schools have to take lead on that one so the early years will be the best time for introduce anything new so 
starting a skill based learning from grade 6 will be a better option than i mean starting it later at grade 12 or grade i mean in the degree level so it is always i will suggest that you start the skill development from the primary years even why to go up to even grade 6 that's will be my question because certainly skills will be better learned in early years very yes, rightly sir. said sir your, very your rightly views said are big thumbs up astonishing one big your thumbs up that internal shift oh, if well. it is introduced by the at the primary level wonders will happen nowadays you know these are the 21st century learners you give them the device and they will become a master mastery learning is their attribute is their characteristics it is very rightly said azra ma'am in between we should take the questions from the audience also there is one question flapping from mrs pratiksha dikshit so let her let her give a chance to ask that question and then we'll proceed further please sure sure sir sure uh, uh, please uh, pratiksha dikshit ji i request you to put down yeah uh, am i audible ma'am absolutely clear and loud madam welcome to our panel session thank you please thank you so much first of all i would like to thank uh, uh, cwsir for organizing this wonderful webinar and aptly chosen the topic and then my sincere thanks and appreciation for the valid ideas presented by all these speakers panel members and especially dr pramod mahajan i would like to thank you sir a big thank you for bringing in your uh, expertise and experience on this uh, forum and uh, really uh, we all are engaged you have engaged us in such a fruitful constructive and uh, open exchanges are going on throughout the session so sincerely since we have uh, you know everybody knows that we have entered a new growth phase and uh, of new normal we can say so uh, your comments will uh, they are all very timely and we will definitely use your suggestions in the upcoming days while framing the strategies for our school so sir uh, i would like to put up my queries uh, uh, two uh, short questions are there first is uh, you kindly explain about the academic credit score bank of a child means uh, Uh, from grade 9 to 12 how is it useful for his uh, future academic upliftment and the next thing related to the same you know uh, these days we uh, lo's uh, learning outcomes have been crafted in new education policy 2020 however a number of challenges have been acknowledged which include uh, i can say measurement of attainment and the competency that is um, Uh, link to workplace uh, which will have a uh, significant implications in future so may i ask you one question related to this uh, what do you think of the emerging challenges and opportunities to ensure relevance of learning outcomes of uh, higher education this is my question sir yeah, yeah. now uh, there is one uh, clear doubt about the academic credit score bank see nowadays what is happening children are taking 9th and 11th very very lightly in 12th standard they will go to kota model they will go to this model they will go to that coaching class mug up and life threat and they will qualify the some exams and then they will uh, get admission to those colleges this academic credit score bank is a substitute and is the ideal and the best available solution for that whatever good you are doing from 9 standard itself it will be recorded it will be recorded it will be taken on record it will be noted and that will be acceptable for all the universities and all the exams so 9th what you are doing well 10th standard whatever be the board icsc cbsc ibdp cambridge then that score will be taken into consideration 11th standard when you are doing good in sports you are good doing good in dance you are doing so many other things also those scores also will be taken into consideration because it is a holistic approach it is not only the academic excellence it is beyond that so that 360 degree report card is the credit like it is just like your bank what amount you are debiting what amount you are crediting so there may be debit also for some two months you are not performing well so debit also will be there that's why i'm telling that thing that's a credit score that's a credit account and then on the basis of that 
the competitive exams will be there, but the nature will be application based only. So even if your score is low, you can compete with others also. So that is the best way to resolve that issue, to overcome from the concept of road memory, mugging up and omitting in the examination, or paying the donation and taking the admission. Because this credit score will be visible to everyone. That will be on the portal. <coughs> Okay, it will not happen by next year itself. It will happen by 2030. 2025, it will start by 2030. It will be happening and by 2040, it will be effective. But when that stage has come, everything will be just, just like a ILTS. ILTS score is worldwide visible and no one has a question about that. Similarly, this score will be like that. And then that will be taken into consideration. So definitely it will be a futuristic aspect and will be helpful for the future. Number one. Number two, you are very rightly pointed out, attainment, engagement, and the competencies. These are the three factors which are the emerging challenges. How to engage the 21st learners, 21st century learner students. What we are doing, whatever I have taught by my professor using the notes of his professor, I am teaching the same thing to that child who is in the 21st century skill. So those days were gone now. Now we have to come out of that and you have to satisfy that you have to engage. Engage for what? For the particular attainment. And that attainment will be measured by what? 360 degree report card. And what is that? Sir, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you. What will be the best outcome in coming years, sir, based on this? Best outcome in coming year, the that student will be will be futuristic number one the students okay. will be getting their score properly and the final okay. outcome will be the colleges will approach those students come and join our college because your score is this see right. there are universities there are universities giving the scholarship to the students to learn if i have to cite the example one of our students were given the 110% scholarship only for what? Showing because of uh, her outstanding performance. And she is not like that because she is doing something going here and there, nothing. She is simply following the steps and it is happening. Now, one of the panelists has quoted Bihar and Orissa and some. Let me, let me give the data. I am a data-driven person. These three, four stages, these three, four steps, their result, if you take in the IIM, in the IITs, are the highest in the country. So unnecessary, we should not blame anyone. They have their own channel. They have their own custom. They have their own style. That is one thing. Second thing is uh, unprivileged group or unprivileged students. NEP has given the solution for that. Everyone and anyone can go to any level and each level. As Dr. Venu has very rightly said, one year you have studied, that will not be wasted. Two years you have studied, that will not be wasted. I have completed my one year MSc maths and I could not complete that thing being the principal and that is wasted. If the NEP should have been that time, I should have been another fourth post-graduation. So that is very good. <laughs> so that's the answer of, uh, effective, uh, effective. Also, the and the outcome also. And that is, exam that is example based and based on the data. So based on this, I would like to put down one more question. Sorry for troubling here. <laughs> I just wanted to, uh, you know, share your opinion, okay, on NEP. In this new feature, any feature need not get drafted. Suppose if you were to do it, that redrafting, what would you bring the change? Uh, if, if I were to redraft the NEP, I will focus more on the prioritization and to expedite the process. Now they have given that 2040. Who has seen 2040? We have to prioritize the and expedite the process. That will be my input. If they ask me to redraft it, I will expedite it. And I will start, I will request them to start from maybe next 2021 or 2022 effectively. So that is, that is my, uh, actually this question is fantastic. And the session is going on because of our fantastic moderator. I would like oh, to use the views of Dr. Venu also on this point. If he it is only boosting from you people and sir. Believe me, yeah, it is so only because of you people here. Uh, I, I would like to ask the same question to our... Dr. Venu. Dr. Venu. Venu, Venu. Yes. Yeah. Dr. Venu, Venu Nathanji. 
well um, that is a good question certainly uh, tough tough one too <laughs> this policy was not drafted overnight yeah the policy makers took enough time and they discussed the possibilities over a period of long time and finalized it so they must have considered all these aspects so we have to understand that one so as an outsider we only see the final draft any one feature sir at least one feature from your end that's where i'm coming to we see only the final draft but all these questions that uh, mr pramod mahajan mentioned also they must have considered the feature that i will suggest is intensive teacher training right intensive Noted. training that is what i will add you need good mentors to have good mentees yeah uh, the, on the same question i would like to request our vice president ms malka grewal she is a lady of linguistic depth there are lot of things people are talking about the languages and all if you have to redraft the nep what changes you will bring with respect to the language and linguistic depth and all those things please mrs melka grewal uh, uh, thank you sir well to talk about language and what changes i would like to bring i would say language is a vast thing i mean you know it's uh, it's never going to be complete so language is something which has to you know go on every day so uh, if if you talk about uh, basically the only language part language is everywhere so we really cannot change or bring uh, in something for the change of the language because uh, if if i talk about see since i'm leading a cambridge school so whatever uh, everybody is discussing today about um, nep which we are already uh, following it uh, in a cambridge school so it's 98% of uh, you know the cambridge curriculum uh, that's being that's been followed right so all the assessment uh, practices that you've discussed about you discussed about you know 360 degree which i'm already uh, you know following right from kindergarten my report card itself is named as 360 right um and about the various uh, talking about various skills and to assess the child in a particular skill and then you know polish uh, the child and you know you push them towards uh, that particular skill that uh, you know they're really doing great in so uh, we're already doing that so uh, i do not find uh, much change uh, when when we discussing about nep because i am into this uh, curriculum from my past few years already good well taken Uh, what was the advice you have for others on NEP, especially for students? Uh, well, uh, of course, I would say, uh, ma'am, it's a great thing, uh, a great initiative. Of course, uh, this was actually the need of an hour, right? Definitely, it would take time to get used to because uh, our educators are, you know, you know, will not be uh, easily adapting the system. It really takes time. It would be a lot of, uh, you can say, kind of. Uh, you know practicals happening a lot of trials happening but uh, if we take it seriously it's really really going to make a huge difference to you know the children and it's actually for the betterment of the children as well as the educators thank you so very much ma'am education is the most powerful weapon as i said for one who can change so here i would like to request our uh, mrs vandana uh, madam to highlight on it my two questions are at a time uh you know considering the time limit my one question was related to your own opinion if you could change any one of the feature in any policy and the second one is what's the message for the students what you advise to uh i would the policy is good but i feel that the health aspect the physical and mental as physical and mental health of the student should be primarily included in the curriculum should be given more value to and in the present world the mental health is actually not accepted so the student have have to be trained to accept failures to face challenges to taking risks so all this can be included as a subject primarily because for me this is very very important so it is not given i 
cannot say, say it categorically, but I can say it can be more stressed on. And then again, the uh, for me, the exit and entry system has to be a little more uh, clear and with backed by the valid reasons. These are the two changes. And then for the students and the teachers, I feel the lesson is that willingness to change and uh, the new perceptions with the new policy and not only the teachers and the students, the parents have to change and willingness to adapt the new. That is the message for all the students, parents and teachers and total acceptance and total efforts to accept and help us all adapt the new, the, the beautiful work done by the government. I can say the policy is very, very good, but we have to all join hands together to implement that. That's it. I think the function of education is to teach one to think intensely and to think critically. I truly agree. I request uh, Mr. Swami Nathanji to highlight on his uh, with a very profound notes. Um, the NEP has suggested uh, it is a very good one. We have to welcome it and work as a team to see that it is implemented and uh, carry forward properly. But I expect two things, which is uh, very important. First one, uh, some of them are taking a teaching profession just by a choice. There should be a major change happening in that. They should not uh, think that, okay, I didn't get this job. So let me go and start teaching. That scenario must change. We, sh we want passionate teachers, not the teachers by choice. There is no other option. So I'm joining as a teacher. That should change. I think uh, this NEP will way pay the way for that. Second one, student side, if you see, I expect them to change from this competitive to competency learners. Let them not have this kind of competition. Let them go for enhancing their competency skills, become a skilled learners, skilled individuals, so that the future is good for everyone. Dr. Pramod sir, please. Yeah, very rightly said, Sobhinathanji, this NEP, that 360 degree and that academic credit score as uh, uh, Pratiksha Madam has asked, is the solution for that competency skills only? from competition to competencies. How to convert that comp uh, that competition into competencies? By finding out each and every day what good thing you are doing. So that anecdotes, that profile, that score will make you a competent personality. And then your competency scores will force the colleges to invite you come and join our college because your competence is this. It is just like your credit score Sibyl is maintaining and the bankers are running behind you. Come and take the loan from me. The day will come. This will happen. The students who are having good competency scores, good academic credit score, universities will be calling, big, big universities will be calling. And finally, I am, I am a futuristic person. I am dreaming that thing. The IITs also will invite such type of people. Come and join us. We are there for you. Whatever you want, we will provide you. So, oh well, well, sir. Oh, oh well. well. I am really glad. I consider a great honor uh, interacting you. I uh, am honored to have uh, our uh, guest, Mr. Dr. Venunandanji. I request him. Uh, to uh, put down uh, his uh, few points, his excellency hardly need any introduction. You make us proud with your uh, distinguished, uh, I should say, work in numerous capacity. You have got such an amazing work ethic. I request, uh, uh, sir, uh, please uh, go ahead with your conclusion notes. Thank you. Chief guest, other guest, Panelists, organizers, ladies and gentlemen, good evening once again. It's my singular privilege to address you all today. Thank you all for uh, being here and thank you all for your valuable inputs. People have been actively discussing the national education policy since its approval in July. Their reactions are polarized into two blocks. 
the supporters blindly hail the advantages while the opposers criticize the policy with multitude of allegations. The reality, however, lies in between. Amidst the deluge of criticisms, we should not forget that the policy contains proposals of reforms which are inevitable, timely, and novel. The current 34-year-old policy is archaic now. To understand the ideology of the new policy, we have to view it against the backdrop of economic reforms introduced in phases since 1991. These reforms have integrated the Indian economy and market fully with the world economy and market. As a result, a vibrant neoliberal economy and market have been in existence in India since 1991. Interestingly, there is an underlying consensus among all political parties concerning the neoliberal idealism, despite their left, right, or regional orientations. If at all there are disputes among them, they are only related to the speed, process, and priorities of the implementation. The bedrock of uh, Neoliberalism is the ambitions and aspirations of the middle class. They constitute about 20% of India's population. Their purchasing power is equal to the purchasing power of their counterparts in the developed countries. Their aspirations about education are linked to India's market dynamics too. Though Narasimha Rao's government constructed, re restructured the economy in consonance with the requirements of neoliberal capitalism in 1991. The education sector has never been equipped to take on the opportunities and challenges of the open market. When the Chinese premier in 1978 opened the Chinese economy and linked it to the world economy, he placed emphasis on the reformations in agriculture, industry, education, defense, science and technology alike. He knew that neoliberal capitalism has its basis on wealth generation and knowledge economy is the driving force of the neoliberal economy. India also has been pursuing liberalization privatization and globalization since 1991. We are now the third largest economy in the world. However, we have not yet brought about any comprehensive reforms in the field of education. Our most celebrated IITs and IIMs are also very low in the world ranking. We are far behind in generating innovations too. India is ranked 48 among 131 countries as per the innovation index brought out by the World Intellectual Property Organization. It is in this context that we need to evaluate the new education policy. In today's globalized world, timely reforms in the education system are essential for a nation like India to withstand the global market pressures. It is also crucial to ensure that our children imbibe the digital age combusted knowledge explosion. How can we take on these challenges? Our children need to depart from road learning. They need to acquire 21st century skills. They need to gain dexterities and proficiencies in critical thinking, problem solving, and innovation. We have to make them capable of performing and accomplishing instead of merely knowing and doing. The policy envisages that education should be process driven not content driven. It should be multidisciplinary with the predominance in creativity, critical thinking, and problem solving. The learner should be able to understand when they need new learning and how to learn what they need. They should be able to know when they need to unlearn what will no longer serve them. And they should be able to understand when, when they need to relearn what they need to be successful. The policy also envisages developing a learner-centered pedagogy 
in which the teaching learning process will be collaborative, experiential and inquiry based. Thus, learners will be able to discover and construct knowledge themselves. Knowledge creation and research have been instrumental in continuously motivating the population of a nation to develop and sustain rich, vast and vibrant economy. The United States, Germany, Israel, South Korea and Japan have made great strides in the fields of science and technology, which contributed to making their economies robust. Despite crucial importance of research, R&D investment in India currently stands at only 0.69% of the GDP. It is 2.8% in the United States, 4.3% in Israel, 4.2% in South Korea. India is the youngest nation of the world with youngest population. It has all the potential of becoming the knowledge hub of the world. However, it has to reinvest, reinvent, revamp its research capabilities significantly. Recognizing these needs, the policy considers a holistic approach to transforming the quality and quantity of research in India. The policy stipulates that the public investment in education should be 6% of the GDP. Okay. This proposal is nothing new. Yes. The first education commission proposed this long ago, but the governments that ensued have never accepted this proposal. No. The current investment is only 3.1% of the GDP. Out of this, 0.6% is only spent on research. The United States and Germany spend more than 5% on research. One thing is clear, if India is to become knowledge economy, the government should earmark 6% of the GDP for the education sector as recommended by Kasturi Rangan. This, however, will bring substantial additional fiscal liability for the government, for both central and state governments they have to find 6.4 lakh crores additional money. So that will be the greatest challenge to implement this policy. So what is the consequence? High levels of private investment as a result will happen. This high, high level of I mean, private investment will may happen uh, of the commercialization of education in India. One of the strongest criticisms is that new education policy is a ploy of neoliberal capitalists and the Hindu fundamentalists to plunder India's human and natural resources. They say that it is also a ploy to indoctrinate young mind with the Hindutva ideology. This criticism does not seem to have much legitimacy. We started courting neoliberal capitalism in 1991. And it was the Congress government that tied the talisman. The NDA government has continued to enjoy the courtship. Consequently, the Indian economy is already merged with the international political economy, integrated irreversibly with the global economy in all areas, including finance, trade, and foreign policies. The Indian middle class believes that it is better to be part of the neoliberal capitalism to protect their interest and that the curriculum of the 21st century should prepare the next generation for employment in the world market. They further welcome, they therefore welcome the uh, policy wholeheartedly. Considering all these things, we have to evaluate the policy empathetically with a critical perspective. I once again, thank you for this wonderful time together. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you uh, so very much, uh, sir. Your thoughtfulness is a gift I will always treasure. For students, I would like to just add on here, your best teacher is your own last mistake. If you want to shine like a sun, first burn like the sun. We should not give up and we should not allow the problem to defeat us. And is not the end. In fact, END means effort never dies. Let's work and sweat for a great nation, the vision, the vision of transforming India into a developed nation. 
all togetherly, parents, management, our educators, all are on tip of the toes to develop our nation. Here, it's not that I am smart, but I stay with the questions. I stay with the questions which sticks longer. Once again, I thank all for your cordial cooperation. On behalf of CWSIR, I'm thankful for providing your gracious presence, joining us. Thank you, CWSIR, for giving me uh, such a wonderful uh, opportunity Azra, to lead Mrs. a panel. Azra, before ending, yes. uh, let me give one remark. Uh, Dr. Venu has very rightly introduced the concept of meta skills and metacognitive skills and their importance in yes. NEP. And he has widened this sphere of NEP. What will be the questions in future? I think before we end, uh, the president of CWSIR, Dr. Pandey, I think uh, we would uh, like him to give his final comments in a crispy way. And then uh, it's up to the moderator to conclude the meeting. So Dr. Abhishek Pandey, please. Sir, uh, uh, Mr. Ashish, sir, I request you, as we go ahead to wind up the session, I would like to have your short and sweet uh, recording as we are missing you today. So I would like to add on after this session ends to attach to the copy of FB Live. And uh, uh, yes, after Abhishek, sir. I think, I think Dr. Pandeji, Dr. Venu, Dr. Venu wanted to say something. Yeah, yeah, yes. definitely. CWSIR, I forgot to mention them in my speech towards the end. I'm sorry, hey. sorry for that one. You, and, you are, you are CWSIR, sir. CWSIR is within you. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and actually, it's a wonderful session, and the, the organizers, CWSIR, I mean the the, the founder and the, the all other people behind the scenes. You know, certainly I needed to acknowledge them for this one. And I missed out in my presentation. Thanks, sorry for that one. And I once again recognize them all and their contributions for making it successful and looking forward to uh, participate in more such activities in the future. Thank you very much. Dr. Pandey, please. Thank you so much, sir. Abhishek, sir, uh, I uh, would like to have a lot of time from you. And <laughs> before that, with your permission, as uh, Mrs. Vandana Kohli ji said, that she wanted to have some two questions on uh, you know, Dr. Pramod, sir, and Venu, sir. Please. Yeah. Thank you Vandana so much. Mrs. Vandana, ma'am, your, your questions, please. Yeah, Dr. Pramod and uh, Swaminathan ji, oh. like, how can you relate the education system uh, in Uganda and so in Sharjah with the new education policy? You have faced two worlds practically, like you have been there and you have experienced studying and teaching in India. Mm -hmm. So can you just give a, just a broader uh, differences of what the common points? Because we have, we are all talking about NEP, but you have practically experienced the two different education systems. So if you can just throw some practical highlight, the practical yeah. aspects, not the theoretical, yes. sir. Yeah. So that would actually help us in definitely. adapting the new policy in a better way. Yeah, definitely. And uh, uh, I'm not boosting myself, but I'm the right person for that because I am the General Secretary of Sharjah Private Education Authority also, which deals with all the curriculum setting and the fundamental process of the teaching learning process in the complete Sharjah Emirates. So here, the main difference is the monitoring, consistency, competencies are taken care of. Here, the teacher's licensing is there. Teacher has to prove the equivalency and genuineness of their degrees and certificates, number one. Number two, they have to write the exam. Number three, they have to pass through an interview panel, which consists of UK, US, Australia, India, and UAE experts. After that, if they will take you, you are a competent teacher, you will rock. That is one thing. Second thing is policies are near about same. Students' engagement, students' attainment, autonomy, and the uh, uh, ownership of the academics on the shoulder of the 
student but they are very strict in monitoring the process but they are very liberal also as a head of the institution the rights i enjoy in charja or in ua is far far better than <laughs> india i am proud to be an indian educator in ua but the way they have empowered me to exercise the uh, my thought process within our teachers and the team work that is fantastic that is second thing third thing is as dr venu also very rightly said intensive teachers training every week there will be some circular about this teacher training and they ensure that every teacher is being trained they have full trust once the competency of a teacher is put, they have full trust within the teacher and they work with the school they are not questioning the school they are not questioning the principal they are not questioning the teachers there are the school improvement advisors school improvement advisors are reporting to the ministry they are coming to school and they are working with the school they will find out in what area your school is good and in what area you have to do something more and then they will guide us with the global trends so nowadays we are enjoying all sort of global trends for the areas where we are little bit having some lacunas so this is a major change here the authorities the government is working with the school not questioning the principal not questioning the teachers not questioning the process they are working with us but yes in before that they will ensure you are competent enough so that is the requirement and that's dr swaminathan uh, swaminathan has very rightly said competencies there is no competition here competencies so comp that competition has to convert into the competencies Competence. you have to do your worthwhileness and then you have to update yourself you have to update yourself for your survival that is not only in ua that is in all the countries of the world and in india i am proud to say in india also it is happening a lot when i joined over here five years before i was having the okay i have i have spent this many years in india what i will do i was the topper so it is not uh, it is not my this thing it is the indian system which has empowered me and after listening to uh, dr venunathan yes the indian educators are rocking they will rule the world the only thing is competency no negativeness have positivity have optimism and the platform like cw sir and the people like uh, pandey and dr pandey and uh, his wife they are what 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 not they are doing they are doing everything for for what to create that awareness if such type of things are there and as uh, our vice president ms uh, mrs malka has very rightly said yes we are on the right track and we are creating that thing with that magic will happen and there is no much difference the difference is only here competency they are checking your competencies they are helping with uh, helping you they are empowering you and they are taking the best from you i request Thank dr you, abhishek pandey sir uh, please uh, you know i would like to enlighten uh, you with your uh, no introductory points but please uh, up to you uh am i audible first of all actually i have to ask one thing am i audible or not is i am sitting mm. in my village right now so i think my network will not be so good enough to you know have words uh, with all of you well you are, i would like to dr pandey dr pandey uh, you are not audible uh, voice is not clear uh, voice is not clear at all that is the biggest challenge we have a connectivity proper connectivity <laughs> uh dr pandey sir sir what i what i request you what i request dr pandey what i request you you make a video of your thought uh, of your thoughts and will include in the include that video in the fb link along with the fb link because the audio is not at all good 
I'm sorry to say that, but audio is not at all acceptable. Hello. Abhishek sir, Abhishek sir, your voice is totally uh, on and off. Am I audible? No, not at no, all. No, sir. There's no a lot of breakage there. My network is not very. So thank you very much for being with us today. I I will not be audible. Sir, I, I request to hear uh, Mr. Ashish sir and Dr. Abhishek sir, the founders, the, the pillars over for CWSIR. I request uh, you people to just give one clip so that we can add on after the session. And uh, I uh, have here to say, uh, yes, it's not that uh, I was uh, thanking for my CWSIR for giving me such a wonderful uh, opportunity to lead uh, this panel. I once again want to state that we are grateful to all the distinguished speakers here. All the over the panel discussion, we had a very, uh, you know, uh, experienced, vast knowledge and uh, had a grateful thoughts to lead with new motives and visions. We thank you all on behalf of uh, the panel too, as uh, I here, moderator, uh, I uh, could say that, yes, the time was uh, a bit uh, contradicting me. Otherwise, I would have taken and dragged out many questions here. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you, honorable guests, panelists, speakers, my lovely viewers, made very resounding success today. Hearty word of thanks for thought provoking uh, from our uh, chief guest. Uh, an interesting address, making session uh, meaningful. Finally, I thank wonderful students who raised some points today morning, who have turned up in such great numbers from our departments and institutions, my school children, and many of them who are following our uh, Facebook and their queries I respect wholeheartedly. Once the session done, would like to address it one-to-one. -one. Thank you so much. Glory is to you all and praise to you all and me. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but you. I seek your forgiveness and repent to you. Thank you all. Tons of love. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Jazakallahu khair. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, once again to each and everyone to spare the time with us. And really, I have learned a lot today from the moderator, from our guest of honor, from Mr. Saminathan. And the question which was asked by uh, Mrs. Pratiksha Dixit and the way shown by our vice president and moderator rocks today, no doubt. Yeah, you are so absolutely much. right, so sir. Absolutely <laughs> right. We couldn't have we couldn't have pulled uh, uh, this off without um, uh, Ma'am Azra. So thanks a lot to the pilot of this event who uh, steered it up so well. And um, thanks but, to all the. But the uh, co I'm thankful to Dr. Abhishek Pandey, sir, who has dragged me from somewhere other chains and uh, pulled me for this session. I really um, admire sir's uh, unique ideas and ideology. I thank you all and thank you personally one to one. I couldn't address Jayashree Rajama Madam here, Malka Grewalji personally, Sunil Sunila uh, Salayanji, Rahmat uh, Ramlat Abdul, sorry, and uh, Ajay Kab uh, Vandana Kohli Ma'am personally to you, Prashant. And I miss out our guest uh, whose uh, you know voice was a bit uh, net issue that side. So thank you all. Uh, with all your permissions, would like to end up the today's session. Any one single uh, stroke points and hats off to our CWSIR who has raised up today's topic. And uh, any points from you people, please. I would like to. I would like I would like uh, Mrs. Mini Menon to give one remark. She's the vice president, vice principal of Sharjah Indian School, and in Great. the Sharjah from last 15, 16 years, seen all the ups and downs of the education. Great, great, great. Madam, please drop your uh, points. Uh, we will be overwhelmed by reading it twice and thrice. And uh, with the short note of, uh, you know, end up of sessions for today, have a blessed evening. God bless you all. God bless me too. And keep my name in your prayers. Thank you so much. You Good evening to all of you there. Thank you very much for this wonderful session. I was listening to the various views from both from India, from Uganda, from our own principal here. Uh, in my opinion, NEP has been a boon. 
something which we have been looking for for so many years. And being in this uh, educational field for the last 40 years, in fact, I too uh, worked in India for almost uh, 29 years before I moved to Sharjah. I was in Chennai in one of the leading CBSC schools. And uh, in fact, I'm a CBSC student also. In fact, I passed my schooling was also with CBSC board. So I have seen the, uh, and I, many of these policies, actually, it was there in the CBSE board, but in a lighter way, which has, uh, I think that was uh, probably some uh, the people who have framed it has taken many of these things from past experience. So like vocational training, like vocational training was up there in the CBSE syllabus, then uh, calculating the 9th, 10th, and 11th uh, marks were taken when uh, considering the final promotions sorry, final board exam. So all these were the, these points were there earlier with CBSC, which I think has come in a better way. In fact, uh, finding out what was, uh, uh, why, did, why was it removed? And then again, uh, it's coming back and like it's a new, uh, new wine in a, I mean, sorry, in a, or in a old wine, no, sorry, well, there's something we say in the old new wine. wine in a, yeah, old wine, old in, wine a, in new bottle. Old wine in a new bottle. <laughs> So like that, uh, you know, the, probably, and that actually is good because uh, it has been uh, put in with a lot of thought. In fact, by the practical experience that uh, why it went wrong and why it has been put in again. So definitely this policy has come in with a lot of thinking, a lot of, uh, a lot of heads put together. So it is really good. Of course, when we start implementing it, we can expect a lot of teething troubles. And I'm sure as we proceed, all this can be sorted out. And, uh, and if needed, it can be changed, reframed, and uh, taken it from wherever, the, when, whenever we find there is something wrong. So thank you pride for- makes us. <laughs> yes, pride <laughs> makes us artificial, and humility makes us real, <laughs> in short. Well said, Azra, ma'am. Final, final one line remark by Vice President. Ms. Malka Grewal. On, on behalf of our founder, uh, Mrs. Smita Walia and uh, President Dr. Abhishek, and of course, the entire team, I would like to thank our chief guest, our guest of honor, and of course, our panelists for being uh, here with us today, for culling out time and you know having a great discussion on NEP 2020. And of course, uh, Ms. Azra has done a wonderful job. Thank you. Uh, it was really great. Uh, to keep us all are occupied and of course it was quite interactive session thank you so much and i look forward for many more such interactive sessions with all of you and let's hope to catch up soon thank you good morning good evening good afternoon good night whatever whichever country you are in all good the best subhan yeah. subhan allah and khuda hafiz khuda hafiz <laughs> <Good evening. laughs> what what do you say in uganda dr saminathan we say unmute, shut back unmute, hair. Unmute, unmute. <laughs> Normal good evening, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Look here, it's, it's night time, so it's almost quarter past eight, so I would say good night, shut back hair. Shabbat I was about night. to use the same word, shut back hair. Yeah. Yeah. And the common <laughs> common thing is Allah office. <laughs> <laughs> God is one, that's it. God is one. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you all, thank you all. Love you all, tons of love. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. So, shall I end the uh, meeting with the positive yes, note? Sir. Sure, uh, yes. sir. Sure. Yeah. Dr. Pandey, if you are listening to me, shall I end the meeting with your permission, sir? I think he has left. Okay. So, we are ending with the positivity, with the full optimism. And uh, in due course of time, we will again plan some more sessions. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you.